If oh. you stay with the same lender, okay. you can call them as long as it totals a, the, the variables are usually a five year term. So if you have a five year, say you've had it for a year, you can call the lender and say, what would you offer me on a four year right now? And they can give you a four or five year rate. And then you can flip it into that with no penalty and stay with them. And you early renew it into a new fixed rate. Well, welcome back to the Bamford & Co. podcast. I'm here with one of our many mortgage brokers that we've had some great success with is uh, Tawny Blay. Tawny, thanks for coming on. Uh, would you mind giving us a little bit of a breakdown of your background in the mortgage industry? So I've been in the mortgage biz for over 20 years now, been in the banking and I've kind of been on every side of it. Uh, opened a mortgage brokerage called One Street Mortgage uh, just about nine years ago now and have an office here and one in Edmonton. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Learned something new. I didn't even yeah. know about the Edmonton one. Yeah. That's awesome. So mortgage is your specialty and uh, I know that we've had some, some good rate announcements from the Bank of Canada. Um, where do you see things going, say, in the next, I think we have two more announcements for yeah, this year October and, then, and December no, October to December um, and then also we got a couple for next year is it where do you kind of see things leading are they are they going to continue to decrease of where everybody's yes. hoping yes all arrows are pointing down okay. um, the economists there's a few economists of the big banks that have come out and said that there's going to be some bigger cuts hopefully December and beginning of the year possibly half a percent each of those so if that happens, October is a quarter and a couple of halves, that would, that's over a percent that the clients could hopefully see, which is going to come in line with fixed rates. So okay. a lot of people are leaning towards variable again, because it could be a win. Right. Okay. Okay. So historically, from my experience, and, and I'm not the specialist on anything, but we've been through four elections and every single time that we've actually seen an election, a federal election come around is that we've seen interest rates drop. So I, I do agree with you. Yeah. And, you know, it's not that my opinion really matters on that one. But yeah. um, now what kind of, you know, you mentioned a little bit about the variable rates and then the fix. You know, I know a lot of people are still having a problem of deciding, you know, like what's, What's the average rate that you're seeing right now for a fixed? If you're doing an insured mortgage with your less than 20 down, I've got as low as like 4.39 right now. Okay. Okay. And then variable, you're looking at? 4.29 even. Okay. <laughs> but okay. Um, variable is going to be around 5.45 right now. Okay. Prime is at 6.45. We can get up to about a percent off of that. So when you take a variable, you, what you do is you lock in a discount. Right. So prime's going to do its thing. And then you always get your discount off of that for the whole term. Okay. So it's starting at five, four, five, a fixed, you know, four, two, nine, depending if you want a five year and yeah. So like if it drops a whole percent in a quarter or whatever, now you're already at what you would have, for the what you would have locked in at. And then if the rates keep dropping, those penalties get large right. and that's where people are up against in the next few years. If you're taking a fixed, you could be up against a whole penalty if you're buying right. new, refinancing, whatever. Right. Now on the variable side, usually those penalties aren't quite as much though, correct? Correct. Variable is always three months interest, period. Okay. So banks have two different terms. They can either do three months uh, interest on the contract rate if with your discount okay. or just three months on prime rate. So okay. yes, and that's it. You walk away three months and that's it. Right. So from what I'm hearing is that you might be saying if you're buying a house today, you might be looking at maybe going in with a variable, working with, uh, you know, and planning to maybe take on uh, a fixed rate maybe in the next two years or a year and a yeah. half or, or a year or whatever it is. You just have more to. options with the variable. Um, right. Not that I'm saying it's the right decision because some people are not variable rate mortgage holders. They just can't take the the risk. They don't, they don't even qualify some of them because you're qualifying at a higher rate from the beginning. Right. Okay. So if you're taking a fixed, you get to qualify at a lower rate. Um, and if you're not going to sleep at night and knowing what Prime's doing, then that's not the mortgage for you. Um, but you do have more opportunity with it because as the variable rate starts going down, the fixed may or may not follow. But if it does, you can always flip your variable into a fixed rate at any time right. during your term. So and do you, you still have a penalty for that? No. If oh. you stay with the same lender, you okay. can call them as long as it totals a, the, the variables are usually a five year term. So if you have a five year, say you've had it for a year, you can call the lender and say, what would you offer me on a four year right now? And they can give you a four or five year rate. And then you can 
flip it into that with no penalty and stay with them and you early renew it into a new fixed rate. That's awesome. I even learned something I know. too. That's great. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. So the other thing is that I wanted to to touch, but I think that's a pretty good example of variable and fixed yeah. and, and kind of where things are leading now is that I know rental properties are a big concern for people just getting into the market and having that legal suite in there. Yes. Um, can you give me a little bit of breakdown? Because I was always I was really intrigued to see here what the pre-approval rates would be for somebody that was, yeah. you know, maybe say, let's use a reference point of 400,000, you know, that's pretty... Yeah, I kind of did a, a scenario at a hundred grand of income. Let's say household okay. income, a hundred grand, you're going to qualify for approximately 420 purchase price okay. with minimum down payment. So, um, and I use just, you know, 1% for property taxes. So you're going to be somewhere in that vicinity. Now put a rental suite in a property with a hundred grand of household income. Okay. And now we can, uh, some of the lenders that we work with, uh, will remove the taxes and heat off of the equation mm -hmm. and let you use 100% of the rental income. So say it's 1200 bucks for a two bedroom suite. Now that person can qualify for about 550 purchase oh, wow. price. So one hundred thirty thousand dollars more. Around, yeah. And is that, in that just with legal suites, or is that non-conforming as well? <laughs> Some of the insurance companies depends. They they don't like the word illegal. So as a realtor, don't ever put illegal suite <laughs> in anything. Um, non-conforming is what they like to see. Um, depends on the the deal and right. the insurance company. I have been able to use one hundred percent on a non-conforming if I can prove that it is its own suite with its own entrance and it's all self-contained. Right. So it's kind of a gray area. Yes, do they want to see the legal? Yes, they want to eat that. Right. It wants to be legal, but for the for the sure bet, we'd need to kind of get that legal. Like yes, that I have got there, them eh? approved. Okay. If I can prove yes, it's not it's self-contained. It has its own identity then okay. some of the insurers will use the whole hundred percent oh that's great yeah that's uh it's it's interesting just because you know we, we we definitely need the extra housing out there and the extra suites out there so that is nice to be able to see that people can uh, be approved for more yes when they are you know taking on that responsibility for that extra suite yeah okay awesome so we do have a couple more things i did want to mention um you know you mentioned we sat down last week about one big thing that that you see the majority of people that have a hard time getting pre-approved for. What what would the one big purchase that most people have um, does really affects their pre-approval? Would it be vehicles? Would it vehicles. be vehicles? Why do you need a twelve hundred dollar vehicle <laughs> payment? Because <laughs> that's a mortgage payment. It but is. yes, honestly, it's the the consumer debt. Right. And I mean, there are some solutions. I do have um, options for a cashback mortgage where. The lender will increase your rate slightly okay. uh, depending how much cash back you would want. There's like one, two, three percent of the mortgage amount. And sometimes that three percent, maybe that pays off their car loan. Maybe that pays off the credit card and gets their debt ratio in line to where they need to be. But yeah, consumer debt is a problem. I bet. I bet. <laughs> well, this has great, been great, Tony. Very yeah. uh, educational for our viewers out there. And, you know, if you're ever looking for any mortgage advice, that Tony Blay with One Street Mortgage is, uh, is a good place, good place to start. So... Thanks again for having me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. We'll have to do it again. Thanks.